Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and Lacey. Not Leaky Booty Lacey, but a different Lacey. I don't know, this one looked pretty interesting to me. And I think I did a video on her before. And if I remember correctly, I titled it Master Manipulator. Because she was just whining like a damn baby. And that's why I'm wearing this shirt. Stop whining, start doing. But, oh, this shirt makes my arms look big, baby. Look at that. Oh, getting big. But uh, anyways, we're going to check out Lacey today. She's pretty interesting, at least from what I've already seen. But uh, let's get into it. You are not listening to what I'm saying. Well, we got to talk about it. Because I am not going to stay in this town more than a year. I can't blame her for that, honestly. Ooh. What else is in Missouri? I can't think of anything. Oh. So she lives in a tiny home. Okay, kind of like Airsoft Fatty. If you've seen that, that new tiny home, it's so funny because it's so shoddily put together. Waking up is so painful. Because there's so much weight pulling down on every part of me now that every inch of my body is constantly in pain. Okay, so she's part of the free the nipple movement. No bras. I'm all for that. I vote we just cancel them. Get rid of bras. I think a lot of you ladies would agree with me. But most men would also agree with that. But she also, I don't know how she was sleeping on her side. Because I couldn't breathe when I did that. It like dug into my ribs. But I guess... Most of her weight's in her legs or something, because her thighs have thighs, but... And it's so much worse when I move. So getting up and having to start my day is something I dread. It hurts. Because the very first few steps out of bed, that's the most painful. And every day it's getting worse to the point where... I was just wondering why she had cooking oil sitting like right there for like easy access to fry stuff. I'm scared now. My legs could give out. And I'm terrified of that because I live alone. I'd be worried about my heart. I don't have anyone here to help me. So if that ever happens, my fear is that unless my mom or my friends happen to come over to check on me in time. Oh, I thought they weren't blurring her boobs, but that was okay. I got it now. It's kind of crazy, though, because proportionately, everyone on the show is pretty close in weight, but it just, where your body puts it is so different. So, I don't know. I could end up seriously hurt or even dying. Let it whip, whip it, baby, child. I've let my weight get so bad that something oh simple God. like going to the bathroom or taking a shower could be a life- I actually used to do that too when I had one of those removable things, but my stomach never fully ate it. It wasn't hanging that far yet. For death experience for me. And I'm ashamed I've let it get to this point. <laughs> and I refuse sucks. to even look at my body anymore. And I don't even like thinking about it. Like, oh my god, going cheeks out for the cameraman is crazy, or camera lady, shout out to my eight LGBTQ plus people out there, but I just speak as a guy because that's what I know. But she just bent over and let the world see all that. There's gotta be somebody back there, because that camera angle's moving. Looking at it. I'm overwhelmed by the size of my body. It depresses me when I see it. So I don't even want to be around a mirror when I get dressed. And I make sure I go to a room where there aren't any to put my clothes on. I mean, could you imagine hating your own reflection? I think there was times where I felt pretty bad about that too. But then there was days where I just got out of the shower and like took a selfie and sent it to my girl. And I was like, damn, I look good today. And uh, So I don't know. Maybe I just always had that level of arrogance about me, so... Getting dressed is a whole other event that completely exhausts me. Oh no. I don't even think that I can physically dry my entire body. Like a normal person. 
why are we getting booty water on the chair? Couldn't we sit somewhere else? And also, there's a kitty. I know you guys love the damn cat. I'm a dog person, and you guys, like, want to, like, crucify me for that sometimes. So it's a miserable process, and I hate it all. Hey, boulder My holders. whole life is just a huge struggle now. And the only joy I have left is food. I basically live to eat because it's the only reason I put myself through all I do to get up. Because once I finish getting ready, I just start eating. And it's like this marathon of food until I get full. I mean, at least she's wearing comfortable clothes. I don't know how some of the people wear jeans on this show. Because it's hard as hell to find jeans. And, I don't know, she's so, like, proportionally bigger down low. I think her size would be way up there. I was a size 60. I squeezed to, like, a 38, 36 now. And it can take a lot. I usually make some sausage and some potatoes to start. I'm pretty tired at this point, but my hunger is greater than my fatigue. I haven't ate those brown and served sausages like that since I was in seventh grade and my mother wouldn't cook me breakfast and I was on the Atkins diet. And I can't wait to eat. Sit in the booty water. All I want to do is eat. So when I finally do, that first bite is so, so good. Mm. I think she's enjoying that sausage and I ever enjoyed my sausage. Well, you know what I mean. I can hardly describe it. And I just want more and more. And I don't want that feeling to ever stop. And that's what she says. Don't stop, make it hot. And after I finish my breakfast and there's nothing left, I finally let myself get something sweet. And that's what I've really been waiting for. What? Anything with sugar, especially chocolate, is my biggest weakness. Oh my god, the sausage was the appetizer. That's crazy. Also, I don't know why, but those cupcakes are just reminding me of that Matilda scene where they make them eat the whole chocolate cake, so. It's like heaven wrapped into these tiny bites and I can't get enough. Damn. She's like detaching her jaw like a freaking snake to get that thing in there. Don't suck it off. The last eight to nine years, I've lived here in my house all alone. I don't like going anywhere anymore. I only get out of the house to get food. It gives me a place to go to. But I still don't go very far because it takes a lot out of me just to walk all the way to my car. But she's more mobile than most people. Like, honestly, if she's getting around, doing this, that, cooking, I think she's actually doing better than I was, to be honest. And I am afraid that one day I will get stuck in my car and I won't be able to get out. Mm. I've seen that premise. How is she going to turn the wheel, though? Are her yiddies going to drive for her? Like, how's that work? And it hurts too much to try and stay crammed in my car for too long. So I know it's only a matter of time before I can't do this anymore. Go ahead with the order whenever you're ready. Could I have a double cheeseburger, an extra large fry, mozzarella sticks, and then a large banana shake? Okay, Damn, but that's not that bad. Also, I haven't had checkers since I had, like, bacon ranch fries way back in the day, and I'm pretty sure they gave me food poisoning. 
once I crave it, I have to have it. So I usually pick some things up at a couple different fast food places to get everything I want. Oh, shit. I was just complimenting her on at least she's not eating as much as the other people. Now I realize this is third breakfast and she's hitting up Taco Bell too. This lady's gonna decimate her toilet after Taco Bell. Hello? Hi. Can I have three spicy tacos, please? Thank you. Food is the only thing that helps me deal with my life. So even just the thought of not having what I know I can rely on to help me when I'm depressed is absolutely horrifying to me. <sighs> I don't know how to do it or how to change. Ever since I... Look, I've seen this premise. So many people turn to food for comfort. And I don't know, maybe, like, I was one of them and I just don't even realize it. But you gotta kind of find some kind of comfort in yourself just being you. And I know she's beating herself up already. I can't look in the mirror, this or that. You just gotta think hi more highly of yourself. Like me. I was young. It's been the only constant I can rely on. Oh, she licked it. Food and my weight have always been a struggle for me. If there is a time where I wasn't overweight, I don't remember that. She looks like my uncle in his baby picture, to be honest. He had that same flowing blonde hair. I don't know if that was like a 70s thing or what. I was big when I was a toddler. It started from there and it just progressed. My mom loved food. She was actually a cook at a resort, so food was her life. And she had really bad eating habits. And I know that I learned my eating habits from her. Um, binge eating, that's something my mom has struggled with her entire life as well. So I. It's super funny. When you guys ask me if I had like an eating disorder or ED, I really did think you guys were asking me if my stick still worked. And I can't drive stick, but yeah, I don't have ED. I might have probably had binge eating. Oh my God, this is getting weird. Picked it up too. Because as a kid, I always ate with my mom, and that became our thing together. So early on, I started putting on a lot of weight. It was wow, around her dad's Ron Jeremy? That's crazy. On 80 pounds by the time I was four. Sometimes my mom would take me out to eat for dinner. And I really liked to go out to eat with my mom because I got to spend a lot of time with her. And that time was kind of special to me. That's sweet. But by the time I was six, I was already over 120 pounds, which was almost three times what my weight should have been at that age. Damn, at six? I, I don't think, that's pretty fast. So I'm gonna put a lot of that on mom being a cook, bringing home food or whatever. It looks like they're all pretty overweight. So I don't think she probably ever learned healthy habits, just like I kinda didn't, so. Lacey was always bigger than other kids, but when she it was in first grade, it was time for her to see her pediatrician, and she said, what are you feeding this kid? Because she's already off the charts by a margin. And that's when I started worrying. I didn't know what to do at that point. I mean, that chart wasn't made for us, that's for damn sure. As I got older, my mom and my dad worked longer and longer hours and weren't around much. In many days, I would be on my own from when I got up to when I went to bed. That's sad. I took care of myself on my own. And I started coming- Bro, I just realized that she's holding like a spoon and a knife. Why are you taking, like you want someone to make fun of you for being overweight, hold a freaking spoon in your picture. I went home and making my own dinner and I ate whatever I wanted. One of my favorite things was to mix butter and sugar in a bowl and go eat it in my Ew. room alone and there was no one to tell me I couldn't. Well, no wonder. My dad started to struggle to find work, so he started being around sometimes, and he would occasionally say something about what I was eating. And saying, don't you think that's enough? Or, Heard you've that. already had enough. And I would be like, I'm gonna go do it anyway, because I can. Oh yeah, you're a sassy girl, huh? I'ma do what I want. But her, at least her parents are there. We see a lot of people on this show that have way more trauma involved than that. It looks like she had a happy childhood, pretty much like me. I just blame myself. I did it to me. 
So my weight gain continued and I made it over 200 pounds by the time I was nine. And that's when my weight started to really affect me and cause issues for me because I got tired very quickly compared to my friends. I could barely go around the block without being tired. So, I well, duh, they make you run the mile at that age. I don't think I ever cracked a 12 minute mile or whatever it was. And also, why would they put the biggest girl up front holding the pies? Why couldn't they just like put her kind of in the back a little bit? Because this is kind of deceptive, but yeah, I was definitely overweight at that age too, so it sucks. I was sad that I couldn't hang out with my friends. So my weight was starting to isolate me from everyone, and my life started to get a lot worse, not just because of my size, but because of how things were getting at home. With my dad finding it harder to find a job, my parents started fighting a lot about the finances, and my mom felt my dad wasn't trying hard enough and that he was being lazy. So the fighting got real. What is he holding? Also, don't fight in front of your kids. That's one surefire way to like mess with them into adulthood. Because they're going to think that that's what a healthy relationship looks like. And I heard a lot of people get mad about that guy saying he was looking for a trophy wife the other day. You should treat every woman you're with or every guy if it's like that, like a trophy. Really bad. One time we were all having dinner and they were fighting. My dad just got up and flipped the table. I was just crying because I was terrified. And from that point on, I started to get scared of my dad because he would lose his temper like that. As time went on, they fought even more. Bro, I'll never understand people that break their own stuff when they're mad. Like you gotta buy that shit again. And I was just scared all the time. And I didn't know when my dad was going to lose his temper again, because he always did. Doesn't look scary to me. But that's when I started to realize food was a huge comfort for me. It was there for me when I was lonely, and now it was there for me when I was scared. And I went from constantly wanting it to constantly needing it. When I was 12, I hit 350 pounds, and that was as high as the scales could go at the doctor's office. Damn, so she's flying. She, like, I was at least a teenager by the point I hit that. But it's sad to see that that's the only thing she ever found comfort in. It makes me wonder if she has, like, some kind of anxiety or something like that that's just pushing her to find whatever comfort she can. And as a kid, it's going to be that. As an adult, it could transfer to something much more toxic and harmful. So we never even bothered weighing me after that. I couldn't. Done that. But I knew I was getting bigger every day. And other people would point out how big I was getting. Especially my dad. My dad was the worst. Come on. When I was a teenager, they started to constantly get after me because of my weight. So I... I mean, but there's a level of concern there. But at the same time, if you know that she's getting it at school, why give it to her at home, you know? Because it's just going to beat her down more and just shake her confidence more and more. Personally, I think you should be as confident as you want. Just border on arrogant. I'm somewhere up there. I didn't want to be around him anymore at that point. I might be arrogant, honestly. For a long time, Lacey didn't like her dad and she didn't want to sit down at the table with him. Because he'd always criticize her at the table when we were ready to eat dinner. So she didn't want to eat at the table. And we ate in the living room, and she ate in her bedroom. I did everything. Okay, so it's just a toxic family dynamic. I think I could to avoid my dad during that time. Because he just wouldn't let up. In Lacey's high school years, the obesity became more and more of a problem. I became more a, an adversary to her uh, because I focused on it probably more than I should have at that time. Okay, so mom was giving her food and dad was kind of the one that's being strict. I don't know if he was a jerk or not, but I don't think he should have been on her that much. But also, that should have been something you worked out with your wife because you two should have been like this and had a plan together. But divided we fall. Like, what is it? Together we stand, divided we fall. Yeah, that's it. It was upsetting to me that... I saw what she was becoming, throwing her life away. 
When I was 15, my doctor got a new scale that could go higher, and I found out I was 492 pounds. I oh, shit. The doctor set your ass up with that one. You should have said, we're switching docs. <laughs> I was in shock, but it still didn't stop me from continuing to gain. And when I was 16, during my sophomore year, it got to the point where I couldn't do what I needed for school, so I had to drop out. And it was humiliating for me. Damn. But I was able to find an alternative school that accommodated my needs, so I was still able to finish my credits and get my degree when I was 18. Okay, so she's not just going to sit there and play the total victim, but at the same time, you should have done something then because... I don't know, most people spiral and spiral, but it's when they get a little older, they're like, damn, I can't do it anymore. But you have to totally change your lifestyle, and that's the part nobody wants to do. So she, from a very young age, was that lifestyle of just eat, eat, eat. So. At that point, I was up over 560 pounds, but I couldn't stop eating. Food helped me get past some of the hardest moments in my life. Especially at that time, because that's when my relationship with my father pretty much ended for a while. Oh, man. My mom and my dad finally got a divorce, and my dad moved away. I was devastated. I didn't talk to my dad for like three, four years when him and my mom divorced. I still think they might get back together. They're kind of like flirty all the time and stuff like that, but it was like three or four years. They've been divorced ten years now. Yeah, we didn't talk for a long time. I was the first son to reach out to him. And then my other brothers followed suit, and he's a great dad. I mean, he just kind of, I guess he was hurt. I don't know. A lot of people are hurt in diver divorce or whatever. I stated when that happened. As much as my father hurt me, he was still my father, and I didn't want him out of my life. I love Lacey, but I just came to the realization or the feeling that Lacey really was not my daughter. She was her mother's daughter. So I kind of gave up and it wore me down. There were issues within me about, I hate to say it because she's my daughter, but embarrassment. You shithead. Like, how are you embarrassed of your daughter? She's yours. You can't just say, oh, she's my wife's daughter. That is the scummiest thing. I don't know. Maybe the guy, I forget his damn name, Zay Lynn's husband, he sucked, but this guy, what he just said, totally sucks. Maybe he's the stern one, but you can't say something like that. That's just downright mean and hurtful, man. You know, being out in public, you know, with her because of her size. I spent the next couple of years living at home with my mom, just eating and getting bigger. And when I was 20 and in the 600s, I tried to go to community college, but there was just no way. I couldn't do it and get around. So I went on disability and used that money to get my own place. And that's what I lived off of for the last eight to nine years. Oh, damn. So she went on disability early. Actually, I was on disability for three years. That's probably the thing I'm most embarrassed about. You hear me talk about all this stuff when I was overweight. That embarrasses me. I've been off it for quite a while now, but... Finally, I was just like, man, I got to a weight where I don't need that anymore, and that was one of my main goals with the surgery, so I'm very happy to say that I am a member of society again. I've never had a job, and I've never made my own money. I've never felt that, what it feels like to work for something, and uh, I think that's really Damn, never? My life is just this house, and for the last eight or so years, I just lived here on my own. My mom used to eat with me, but she had gained a lot over the years too, so she decided to get gastric bypass. And after that, things changed some between us because we couldn't eat the same foods anymore. Okay, so your only relationship with your mom pertains to food? So now, uh, that's, this family dynamic is so screwy, man. It doesn't seem like she ever felt what an act, I don't, what in my, in my opinion, an actual family should function like. My dad comes by to see me at times. He got remarried a little while back, but our relationship has been strained since childhood. So the only people I really see constantly are some of my friends I've had since childhood that are still a part of my life. So what's been going on? Not a whole lot. Just been home and doing my own thing, I guess. We were gonna ask you to go out to eat? Yeah. No, not today. 
You sure? Yeah. How are we going to get you out of this funk? That's also, I mean, you never want to go out and do stuff like that because you feel like they're going to make you walk more than you can. And also, her one friend sat in the booty water chair, so good luck going out, lady. You're going to smell like straight sweaty butt. Maybe when the sun comes out. We're worried about you. Things are getting worse with you. We're noticing. Well, thanks for worrying, but... I think I'll be okay. It's been really hard watching Lacey gain weight and just get more isolated. And I feel like she's losing hope in herself. She doesn't deserve the lifestyle that she's living, but it's all that she knows. <sighs> she's just deflecting because she doesn't want to address the problem. There was very few people I would let even come see me at that size because you you really are embarrassed to a point that you'd let it get there. But at least she seems like she has some supportive friends. But they're also trying to take her out to eat. Which is probably counterproductive to what they're talking about here. Not sure isolation is going to help your yeah. funk. I just don't want to see you being a shut-in anymore. I've talked to your mom quite a bit about it. Oh, yeah, I talked to her. Oh, you yeah. best not be talking well, to her. Oh, we talk. We're both worried, and I came out and just told your mom I was kind of being really rude, but and I told her she's got to do something to help. The only person that can do something is Lacey. You guys could cheer her on, but if she don't want it, she's not going to have it, so. I feel as though Lacey's on the fast track to the grave, and I hate that. I don't ever want to get that call and be there at Lacey's funeral. <laughs> Whatever. Sure we can't convince you to go? Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I think just hanging out here is fine. And y'all can go. Are you kicking us out? Or <laughs> can we hang out for a bit? <laughs> Kick rocks. I'm tired. I think it's time for y'all to head out so I can rest. All right. They've been there for five minutes. Basically, this chick came in just to get some booty water on her. And the other lady came in there just to tick her off talking about her weight. So, uh, good visit. Alrighty then. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. I'll see you later. Bye. Have fun. Don't do anything too crazy. I like her outfit. I like that red and leather look. It looks good on her. Damn, she just hit herself in the face. I hate that I've let this become my life. And that it's only getting worse. But I don't need everyone nagging me about it. And I'm frustrated they reached out to my mom this time. I feel like they cried. Oh my god. So she heard something she didn't like, so she went straight for the ice cream. You can tell that she has such an unhealthy relationship with food. It's the only thing that she runs to whenever she's upset. So I think she would have a very rough time in this program. I'm hoping she does well, because it seems like her whole life she's battled this. That's the line, and I'm not comfortable with that. I know everything they're saying is true, but at this point, this has been my life for so long now, I don't know how I would be able to deal with life without food. And just also, why did she have to, uh, like, assume the position to friggin' scoop ice cream? I guess her back hurts, probably. The thought of it scares me to death. Because I'd be giving up all the happiness in my life. Damn, lady, slow. But at the same time, I know if I don't, that I'm not gonna be alive for much longer. Sad truth. And I'm gonna go to sleep one night and then just not wake up. And I don't want that. So I know I have to do something before it's too late. And I eat myself to death. The sad thing is, you can know it, like, and know it for years. I knew it for years. And I just kept being like, you know, whatever, whatever. And then finally, someone, well, my girl called the surgeon for me. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll friggin' do it. Wasn't bought in, but, like, you know it. You just put it off because changing your lifestyle seems like it's just so much man i bet she feels just so defeated 
but she's worth it. She could try. She definitely can do it. There's your guy's kitty. Cat. Welcome to my shed. I've been thinking a lot about what my friends keep trying to talk to me about. For them to keep telling me how bad off I am is just frustrating and embarrassing. But I know they're right. So I agreed to talk to my mom about getting help. And she told me if I'd agree to go to Houston to see Dr. Now, that she'd go with me. So she made an I mean, that's good news because you need those people that'll tell you the things you don't want to hear. I hate yes men. It just makes no sense. If you're going to tell everybody something they want to hear, no. Tell me exactly what I need to hear, and I don't care if I don't like it. I just need to hear it, right? Appointment for me and booked us plates down. This is a funny looking hairbrush. Doesn't pull your hair out. So anyway, we're going to get through this, be thick or thin, and we'll get this done. We'll get you a new life and... I feel like the way that lady's looking, she's trying to stare through your soul. Like, why are her eyes like that? She's bugging out, guys. And I'm me, a very happy mom. Good. Thanks. Love you so much. Love you too. <sighs> so, I think I'm done. <sighs> okay. You can go out, because you got it? I got it. All right. I've never been on a plane or done a trip like this. And it'll be the furthest I've gone or walked in a long time. So I'm scared how my body is gonna handle it all. I'm curious to see how them big old cheeks fit in an airplane, man, cause I was not part of the big booty committee. I don't know why. I didn't get fat in that area, but I think that I could fund at least 10 BBLs with all the fat I did have, so. <laughs> And then on top of that, Dr. Now may not even help me. And this all could be a waste of time. But I just really hope this is not a big mistake. All right, let's go. Oh my. Also, it's never a waste of time if you make it worth the time. But the way she pulled on her leg, like her pants, to lift it into the car, had to do that too. She probably does have a bad back. How many seats do you think that you're going to have? I'm Can thinking you get three? Two. I, I hope to, but you know, if it's gonna be three, then let it be so you can maybe prep your leg up or something. For I didn't know you could have to buy three. That's an expensive ass flight. Throw her ass on spirit, man. That's what I said. <laughs> you know, your sore one. Even if the seat's, you know, not comfortable, getting there is all that matters at this point. Do you want to ballet the car when we get there after we get all our bags out? Yeah, I can do that. Because I don't think I can walk that far right now. Sure. My nerves are starting to get to me. And I need this all to be as short as possible because I can't walk very far. But we called ahead for disability assistance, so someone's going to be here to help me and get me a wheelchair. And that's going to Why didn't the other lady do that, though? Because she was doing the Titanic thing on the luggage cart. But you they have disability assistance. I don't know. I've never flown. I drove everywhere because my big ass wasn't paying for two. I'll say that. Help me a lot. Because I'm going to have to sit down soon. Hi. Uh, yes, please. Right, anyway, I'll take your bags. We'll go ahead and get you started. All right. What's the best way to sit here today? I might Ooh, need a wheelchair. Look at Zaddy. Yeah. No problem. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bet she's got a ride. You can give her, buddy. She did say she lives alone. Right. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and have a seat right over here for a moment. Alrighty. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. No problem. Man. Just wait for that for me. Yep. Just wait for me for a few moments. I'm gonna go uh, request a wheelchair. Okay. okay. Thank no. you. Ah, oh, here he comes. 
I think I'll try it without. I mean, I could try without. Even without holding it? Yeah. Okay, I got you. No okay. Problem. I mean, if you thought... She's stopping herself, honestly, because that's what we do at that size. I mean, I would have been scared to walk through that whole airport because there's this, like, fear in your head of, like, what if something doesn't work out and I can't get out of the store or I can't get out of the airport in this case. But you're, like, genuinely scared that if you walk in somewhere, you're not going to be able to make it back to the car or whatever. And it's crazy because it took me a long time to even drop that fear. Probably, like, 175 pounds before I was like, okay, I'm good. So, I just ready? Okay. And we're going to go right through security, okay? Okay. I wasn't expecting this. This is the type of stuff I'm always worried about going anywhere. Because most places don't have what I need to accommodate me. See, that's what I mean. And now I'm gonna feel like everyone's looking at me, trying to struggle to get to the plane, when I was just hoping to be able to do this and get it done as fast as I could. I can't stand for long like this. I'm already hurting a lot. 30 minutes max, I'd say, before your back is on literal fire. And also, if people stares at you, who the hell cares? Like, I'm the guy sitting in his car at the stoplight friggin' dancing and, like, singing his friggin', like, head off, man. It's fun. People stare at you and laugh. It's fun. Like, don't worry that much. You're too worried about what other people think. Right. Please don't follow me. We'll go to the gates right over here, okay? Okay. I don't think people understand how hard this is for me to do and how bad this can get if I start to hit my limit. I just need to make it to wherever I can sit down next. Thank you very much. Thanks. You have a good one. Enjoy your flight. Thank okay. you so much. No problem. Thank goodness. Now that I'm able to sit down, I'm calming down a little bit and I feel better. That's good. You don't seem as nervous as you were when we were driving I'm now. I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, this kind of is the start of your new life. So if she does what she's supposed to, this could turn everything around for her. As speaking of, as someone who's been through it, man, my life is so much better. So I wish that she does good on this one. I actually want to see people do good. I think you guys think I just want to watch them crash and burn. No, I want to see them come out the other side happier, better, more confident. So <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> oh, man. They're a lot bigger than they seem. That's what she said. This is the whole beginning of your new journey. Yeah. I am so, so happy. Now that I've made it this far and I'm almost to the plane, I know I can make it. I'm not nervous anymore because we're here. We're here and in my head, you know, it's something more scary than this. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about it now. It's good. But also, didn't mom say she had a gastric bypass? Because if so, I feel like she probably gave up or did it half-heartedly because she still looks like she's pretty overweight. I mean, she's definitely a lot healthier than she was in the earlier photos. Maybe that's just age showing on her a little bit. But yeah, I feel like she probably did what my surgeon told me not to do and ate a whole bunch of junk and like kind of gave up once they got a little down. So... I've never seen airplanes land or take off or move or anything, so looking out there is really awesome. I just can't stop. <laughs> People take for granted that they can go do this and see things like this. True. It's truly amazing. I just have to walk a little bit further and I'm confident I can make it. I am still a little worried about whether I'm going to have any trouble getting on the plane. But I'm mostly excited. I mean, aren't those aisles pretty damn skinny? She gonna be going through there and giving people booty slaps to the face like crazy, man. You usually gotta pay for stuff like that. excited about all this. And I can't wait to fly for the first time in my life. Here we go. Can okay. I help you with anything else? Uh, yeah. Nope, that's good. I'm in. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Thank you. You can help me join the Mile Hot Club. I live alone. <laughs> my legs hurt and I'm really tired. But I'm really excited about this. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. That's so cool. <laughs> this is breathtaking. I'm just thankful to have this whole opportunity to be flying for the first time and overall to have this chance to get my life back. I don't know what's going to happen from here. Or if Dr. Bro, you're on the way to the wait, doctor. Why are you getting the peanuts already, man? Ah, uh, they always do that on the way there. But to be fair, I think most people do just have that one last hoorah or whatever. Also, I think it would be so cool to get like a paramotor, you know, that little fan you strap to your back and just go. I might want to do that one day. No, it's even going to be able to help me. But I'm feeling really optimistic and I feel proud for pushing myself. We should be in Houston here soon. And we have disability assistance set to help me once we arrive. That's so good. I feel like I can handle the rest of the trip and I'm not worried. I got this. Bro, I've never seen him do the double push. Man, you would think even on like Thousand Pound Sisters, that one guy got Tammy up in there. Damn, is he really that strong on that show? Wow. As embarrassing as it was to have to get two seats to accommodate my size, it ended up helping me a lot because I could move around and reposition myself when I got sore. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. And I'm really relieved that they have a wheelchair for me. I'm just starving. At this point in the day, I've usually already eaten a lot. But today, I've hardly had anything. So I'm gonna have to get something really soon. Thank you. But other than that, I feel good. And I feel like this trip has been a good experience for me. Oh my god, I can't believe she did the one-legged hop to get up in that sucker. Better make sure it's not one of them fake taxis they got over in England, man. You will be real surprised at what happens. Excuse me, can we find somewhere to get some food really quick? Uh, how about drive through Yes, sir. I told you guys, walking in is a deal breaker when you're that big. Cause that's a lot of extra effort, and you don't have a, you don't have all the energy to do it, man. You have to have the food first, right? Food is energy, after all. I'm really looking forward to finally eating because I'm so hungry, and Never I know this may be one of the last times that I get to eat like this for a while. After I see Doctor Now, I'm probably gonna have to start making a lot of changes with what I eat. So I'm gonna savor this. A number seven. Can I get a number seven, please? But I know tomorrow is a new day, and I'm going to have to start working hard. Thank you so much. Okay, so here's the hoping that she actually is going to take it as this is the last go-around. But I'm going to tell you, tomorrow becomes the last day, then the day after that's the last day. It kind of just keeps going if you let it go, so... This has been a lot of activity for me. So I feel like we're getting here and ending this trip just in time. Oh, dear. oh shit. I told you guys about the one-legged hop. Damn. That's gonna hurt like hell. Oh, no. She probably just broke something. She has to. That's a lot of momentum. Is she going to have to call? Oh, my God. I did that to my knee the other day playing basketball. Brain said run. Leg said what the hell is run. Damn it. Damn it. She's... I can't move my leg. <laughs> Which one, bad. honey? Don't, you can't touch me. Which Just way? leave me okay. alone. All right, all right. I can't believe this happened. I'm in so much pain right now. Well, if you weren't trying to play freaking hopscotch getting out of the van at 653 pounds, this might have went a little better. I don't think I can get up. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh shit. Oh, f leg. 
I don't know if I can get up. <sighs> All right, we're calling an ambulance then. No! Why is she snapping at her mom, though? Her mom's trying to help. I think this is why I thought she was such a big baby from that clip before. She's just, I don't know if her maturity level's been kind of stunted or whatever, but also shutting herself in, but she's kind of acting like a baby, and I usually don't say that. Because we're all kind of whiny. Maybe her blood sugar's down. We need you to get in a stretcher. You no, can't I don't. Get up. Mom, okay. Listen leave up. me alone and let me... I just don't want your Mom. leg to get any worse. I'm fine. You heard it. I just need a moment. And I wish my mom would leave me alone. <laughs> if I just take a second, I can see if I can get up. Because I don't want to have to call an ambulance or any help. I just want to get in my room and eat and put this behind me. Oh, she's going to do it. No, no, no. Don't touch me. Okay. All right. Oh, mm, ooh, oh. Ah, she got mulch all over her ass, but also she's physically better off than a lot of people because we've seen people fall and not be able to get back up. But yelling at your mom, my mom would have pushed my ass back down for real. Don't touch me. Let go of me, please. Okay. Please Careful. let go. You're right now. You're in a, uh, Let go of me. You're awful. I don't get, get it. I she doesn't even have you anymore, lady. Are you feeling like ghost hands on your butt? Like, what's going on here? Oh, my God. Dude, this is... Coming at your mom like that is totally wrong. She's trying to help you. She flew all the... I think this is why I disliked her originally. I don't have you. Just let me do it. All right, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you, stay put. I'm gonna get you into a wheelchair. I just want to go. Lacey, don't you dare pick nothing up. Lacey, you sit on this. No. I'll push you. No. God. I knew this was gonna happen. I was doing so well, and I was feeling confident. But getting out of the van, I just pushed myself too hard, and I feel embarrassed and deflated. And I yeah, I mean, well, if you deflated, we would hurt that. But also, the whole kind of, like, thinking you could do something because you used to do it, like, hop like that, I don't know why that happens, but I did that. Actually, that video, if you guys watched the one where the tree fell on my grandma's house, it's probably way back. But I was like, ha, huh, I lost enough weight, I can climb over this tree. And then I tripped and busted my ass. It was funny, though. Just want to finally rest and eat something. It was horrible to see Lacey fall. That was my worst fear come to life. I fell out was scary. I'm grateful she didn't break anything. But I want to relive that ever, ever again. You want a french fry? It'll make you feel better. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here and I'm ready for bed. I mean, what the hell is on these damn french fries that they're that good, man? I mean, McDonald's fries are good, but don't get me wrong. It's not going to make you feel better if you just took 600 pounds to the concrete, you know? I earned a good night's sleep. I just hope I'm able to rest because my mind is racing about tomorrow and how it's going to go with Dr. Now. My body's breaking point isn't too far off. So my whole life and everything all depends on what happens tomorrow. And I know this is my last chance. Me and my mom are headed to Dr. Nowes for my first appointment. After what happened yesterday, I was able to rest and get some sleep. All right, let's try not playing hopscotch this time, but also welcome to Dr. Now's BBW dealership. Okay. So have a good day. Thank you. You too. So I'm feeling a lot better today. The only thing I'm nervous about is how this appointment is gonna go. 
I think that purse looks pretty funny next to like her big frame. I think that's a normal size purse. Maybe it's a little clutch or something. I don't know. I'm a guy. I'm not that cultured. Lucy Hodder. Pissed off lady. My fear is that I've gotten over 650 or close to 700. Oh shit. That's what I was afraid of. So my weight is more out of control. Damn, though, 691. No wonder her ass makes mine look so flat. Look at that thing. She's in the door right now. That is straight cheeks popping out of that sucker. I'm jealous, man. Well, than ever, and I know I need to get help. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing? I'm Dr. Nazarda. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Lacey. And I'm Martha. Nice and to you're meet you. Lacey's mother. Mother. Yes. Okay. Well, it's good to meet you both. So how was your trip? It's good. It's my first time flying, so it went really well. And first time falling also. Great. I'm glad it went so well. And that you made it here. <laughs> All right, so Lacey, today you're at 691. Yeah. Is that the highest weight you've been? Yes, sir. And you're 5'3". Yeah. At your height, you should be 120 to have a normal BMI. But your BMI is 122. Yeah. Holy shit. Also, 691, I think I know what pick three numbers I'm about to play, but she's getting pretty close to being a damn pick four, to be honest. Wow, that may not be the highest that I've seen, but you're pretty close there. Yeah. So this is a pretty bad situation. I'm surprised you're still able to get around. How much you can walk? About 10 steps, 20 steps? Or... Oh, I can walk pretty far, I guess, for my size, but I'm out of breath all the time doing it, but I okay. can push myself to walk farther. You may I mean, she's actually pretty damn impressive as far as that goes. I didn't think there was any way in hell she was going to be able to get up. So I think she's stronger than she lets herself realize. Because she's just sitting there like, I can't, I can't, but she can. She can do a lot more than a lot of people at her size. I owe your mobility to the fact that you're young. Your body has been able to handle your weight up to now, but that's going to start to change rapidly soon. So when you notice you were having weight problem? In elementary school, when I was very young, I was, I've, I've been overweight since I can remember. So at that age, you weren't feeding yourself. The weight gain started with food you were getting from your mom. I think so. <laughs> That's right, mom. I blame you. You made me fat, lady. I tell her that all the time, and then she smacks me in the back of the head. But part of it's kind of true. I know she didn't. She tried, though. I blame me, but I like to blame her because I think it's way more funny. It says in the family history here, you had the weight loss surgery, huh? I did. How much you weighed before weight loss surgery? 350. Okay. It looks like you're now about in upper 200s. Yes. Right. I told you that she didn't do that damn good. Dr. Now's got them laser focused, like fat eyes. I bet he can, like, 0.5 pounds off just looking at you, man. That guy's got friggin' super fat powers, all right. So it wasn't as effective as it should have been. Which shows me you're still using food as a coping mechanism. And I don't want that to influence your daughter negatively. Because, Lacey, it's extremely important we start to get your weight down immediately. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a 1,200 calorie a day, high protein, low carb diet that I want you to start immediately. Okay. And Ain't no french fries on that shit either. And mama, oh my god, like... I thought she was going to be, like, super happy that somebody was getting on her mom because she was just friggin' yelling at her pretty much. But Dr. Now, man, he don't discriminate, man. Anybody can get those hands from that old man. I want you to start developing the habit of only eating three times a day, no snack in between. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you should have no problem losing at least 80 pounds in the next two months. Okay? Yes, sir. I also want you to start getting more active and work on your stamina by walking at least 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. 
Got it? Bro, just once, I want Dr. Now to be like, and I want you to download Tinder. That will increase your cardio. That would be the... Oh, man, that would make my friggin' day if he said that just once, dude. I can do that. If you do that, when you come back, then I'll approve you for weight loss surgery, okay? Yes, sir. But if you don't, it won't even be possible to even consider performing any surgery. Because when you have a high BMI like that, it's going to be almost impossible uh, to put your sleep and breathe for you because yeah. of the heavy chest and the abdomen. So this is your only option. You have to start losing weight. And if you do that, and we move ahead with weight loss surgery for you, you need to move to Houston for a while. And you need someone with you to help you. Okay. So I mean... As far as breathing while she's down for surgery, that's why I was shocked she was laying on her side. Because all that weight pushing on your ribs, I mean, she's doing stuff that I didn't think a lot of people that big could do, honestly. Once she hit the deck after walking all day, I didn't think her legs was going to have enough left. Uh, is that going to be any problem? No. Who's going to be able to move with you? My mom. Okay. Are you any help for her? Because you haven't been very successful with your own weight loss. Oh, so shit, I'm get her. So I'm skeptical if you're going to encourage healthy choices with her. She does what she wants, doctor. What do you mean? She I'm just stubborn. She does what she wants. So you're saying you don't eat unhealthy food around her or bring her anything she shouldn't be eating? We don't live together now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't mean you got to model good habits to her. And Okay, but also, if she's not enabling her at this point, I mean, obviously, she's kind of working her way back up, and that's the biggest fear after the surgery, honestly. But a lot of people told me they get in this unhealthy mindset where they just can't stop focusing on losing, but it seems like it didn't affect her all that much. And not enable her. So you both need to start to get your weight under control if you want to do this together. And if you don't, then we may start doing weight check with you then. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's no margin of error here or any time to waste. And basically, your body is a ticking clock right now that is going to go off any minute. I can do it. I think I can do it. I'm ready to do it. I really hope so. You both have to take this seriously and do what you need. But if you don't, then Marta, you'll be bearing Glacey here soon. <sighs> And right now, it's just a matter of time before one little thing is too much for your body to handle. Yeah, I mean, that's why the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. And she's getting up there, the upper seven, like almost 700 pounds. Also, didn't they say she was like 450, 500 by the time she was like 13, 14? So she's never experienced like any kind of normal. I was, I don't know, I was like a buck 80 at 12 after I, or no maybe 11 after i lost some weight so i kind that was the only time i really had normal in my life but i know exactly how she feels so and you will die because you're 29 years old you have bmi 122 yeah your life expectancy is not too long so this is very dangerous situation that you're dealing with so you need to do this now okay yes sir all right, I'll see you next time when you come back to Houston, okay? Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, nice to meet it you. It was nice to meet you. Okay. Lacey is very close to having the highest BMI that I have ever seen. And at her height, the amount of strain her weight is putting on her body is comparable to what eight to 900 pounds will be on someone of average height. So her weight... Damn, that's like a friggin' car on, like, sitting on your knees. So, yeah, her BMI is pretty up there. Samantha, I think, wasn't she the biggest on here? I don't know, she was tall, so she might not. It might have been one of the shorter people. I don't know, so. It is at an extremely dangerous point. And there's no way her body can keep going like this for much longer. So right now, every day is a roll of the dice for her as to whether or not her body hits its limit and starts to break down. So if she doesn't change now, she won't have much time left. I'm a mixture of emotions right now because it's been shocking to find what my weight is up to. Yeah, willfully ignorant, I'll say. But as far as Dr. Now talking about a roll of the dice, She's pretty close to crapping out at this point. Not like leaky booty lacy crapping out, but you know what I mean. And how high my BMI is. 
but this appointment has also made me feel hopeful. I am a little intimidated by how much I have to lose in the next two months, but I plan to work really hard and do the diet and exercises like I need because I know how important this is and that this is my last chance. Okay. So at least she's got a healthy mindset kind of starting out. I didn't think she would, but I'm really hoping she succeeds because she, I don't know, something about me like kind of my heart breaks for her because of her dad and her having all these issues, but she didn't nearly have as tough a time as some of the people. There's people on the show with a lot of trauma, but all I'll say is tough times don't last, tough people do. So you have to do something for yourself. She lost 60 pounds. It's been about a month since I saw a doctor now. And the second I walked out of his office, I started doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Why are we using a lighter? And my mom has been helping me to do that by teaching me to cook healthier meals and keeping me accountable. But the diet has been a big adjustment for me because it's not like the temptations just go away overnight. This, this diet doctor not got you on, you see that it's working, right? It's working, it's doing its job. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. Uh, maybe your mom is kind of more helpful than I thought she would be. I thought she was working her way back up, but she seems like she's helpful. Hey, now that's a good attitude. I only have a month to lose as much as I can to get to where I need. And I'm not going to let myself slow down at all. I'm not eating the thing that's not on my diet. And I'm not going a single calorie over. And I'm also doing my 30 minutes of exercise in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. Okay. Ugh. And we got rid of the butt sweat chair. Or is that the butt sweat chair? No, it was different than that one, right? There was another chair. Am I psycho? Oh. I gotta tell you, I'm really proud of you. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I can tell. I'm used to eating a lot of like potatoes and rice and it's hard to make a meal without those things. So it's hard to find what is filling and what is nutritious at the same time. How nervous are you about seeing Dr. Now for your next appointment? I'm hoping that whatever I'm doing here is working and that it shows in the numbers and it shows him that I'm doing it. That man's terrifying, but also, if she's not sneaking anything, we should see some results. But isn't, I don't know, I think there's more carbs in the veggies and stuff on that, but I guess maybe that's okay on his diet? I don't know. I have faith in you, Lacey. I, I think that you're doing it. I hope that it's enough. I hope it's enough, too. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. So that when I'm back to see Doctor now, and I'm on that scale, I'll see the number I need come up. I know this is my last chance, so I have to make sure I don't fail. Okay, let's see. Me and my mom have made it back down to Houston for my follow-up with Doctor now, and I'm feeling nervous but optimistic. These past two I actually think she lost some good bit of weight here because last time she was like touching her mom while she was sitting next to her because the she was like spilling over into her area. But it looks like she's lost a good bit. So I'm happy for her if she had. But I've spoke before they weigh in before and been looking real dumb on here. So let's see. Two months have had a big learning curve because I've had to learn a whole new way of eating. And that wasn't easy. And I just hope I made it to my goal. But I have no idea how this is going to go. The only thing that I'm confident about right now is that I have done everything down to the letter with what Dr. Now told me. I've made no excuses, and I haven't cheated once. So if I don't make my goal, then it was just impossible for me. But I really hope I did, because I need this. Lacey Hotter? Hey, a happy lady. At my last doctor visit, my weight was at 691. And Dr. Now told me I need to lose 80 pounds over the next two months. 
Also, I'm kind of jealous. I wish my last name was Hotter. That just sounds good. Hotter. So that means I need to be down to 611 today. So I'm really nervous to see if I do that. Hot and hotter. 586. Holy shit. <laughs> She wow, over a hundred pounds. So damn, she really didn't sneak anything. She made no mistakes. She was all in from the start. Damn, I'm happy for her because she already has to be feeling some kind of relief from that much weight. I can't believe it. Good job, Thanks. I'm in shock, but a good kind of shock. It's amazing, and I can hardly believe I lost that much. I can't remember the last time I've been this excited. Be proud of yourself. Hello. Hi. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. So Lacey, today you're down to 586. Yes, sir. Which is a 105 pound weight loss in one month. So you stuck to the diet? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Marta, you sticking to 200 calorie a day diet too? I do, I go more than 1200. Of course she does. Her daughter, who is way bigger and has a way bigger stomach, she's had the surgery, but she's just sitting there. But Lacey doesn't need her mother to do it for her to be successful. Nobody dieted that was around me either. So it just shows that she's got the right mindset. Like she's locked in. It doesn't matter what her mom does. She's going to keep doing her and hopefully keep going and improve, you know? I think, um, but I still uh, am able to eat what she does, but I put more fruit into my meals than she. I think you're eating more than you realize because you don't look like you made progress like Lacey. So it's best to do the same diet she's on. Oh, like. yeah. She could not be happier. She's like, yes. Hit her with the shovel. Hit her. I was going for the grave. Now hit her with the damn shovel. Like, she, I think it's part of her just loves seeing her mom get told off because her mother's been looked down on her for her weight probably her whole life or at least been like, you need to do this, sweetie. Maybe she was more supportive than that, but she's also part of the problem. So right now, if you want to be support for her. I'm trying to teach her the things, you know. It's uh, kind of funny, like, she'll ask me, how many calories are in this? And I'm like, it's this amount. <laughs> it's like, did you weigh your food out? <laughs> She's like, no. I'm like, well, you need to. <laughs> well, you're doing great, Lacey, and I'm proud of you. So I'm approving you for weight loss surgery today. Awesome. Thank you. But before we do that, you need to move to Houston with your mom. If she's the one who will be with you. Yes. Okay. Yes, she does. Okay, then you both need to move down here if you're going to be part of my program. So we can give you support and accountability to do this for long term. And I'm not sure, but something about her mom just looks like, damn, like I was here to support her, but I expected her to crash and burn. I don't know if she's like that or not, but... Part of her is just like, damn, I was messing up and she's doing good now. And maybe she feels like, I don't know, maybe she feels some kind of slight there. Like she wanted a pat on the back too from Dr. Now. But this man only gives them out if you deserve them. 100 pounds, she deserves a pat on the back. Get you to your target weight. Okay. Yeah, you can do that? We can do that. Great. So as soon as you've done that, let me know and I will schedule you for surgery. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, make sure you're still on track and continue to lose weight. Because if you gain, we won't move ahead. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. I hope to see you too soon. And if you need anything, give me a call, OK? OK, thank you. All right. I'm really happy to see Lacey's weight loss over the past two months. And as long as she's stay on track, we will move ahead with weight loss surgery when she and her mom are down here. What is going to be important for her long-term success that immediately after the operation, we start her going to psychotherapy because... Yeah, she definitely needs a little therapy. But also, from the clip that I saw before, I think she's going to get Last Supper Syndrome and just eat a bunch of food. I hope that that was just the move that I saw and she did it then because she pounded some Popeyes in that clip. 
but the Popeye's pulverizer, maybe she only did it one day. Let's see. Lacey's need to always feel she's in control. It's just as much of an addiction as food to her. So it's not gonna go away overnight. And as she starts to struggle, she's gonna fall back into all her old ways if we don't address it. But right now, she's ready for this next big step of weight loss surgery. I'm so proud of myself. I didn't just meet Dr. Nelskull, I lost more than that. So I know I did a good job, and I'm getting the surgery I need to save my life now. I know it's gonna be hard, and there's a lot that I have to do to make all the changes to transition down here, but I know it's gonna be worth it. Look, that's the first time I've seen her smile and be proud of herself and not sit there and be like, well, since I was a kid, this, 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 and uh, I never felt... So that's the first time I've seen her, like, genuinely happy, besides when she was sucking off a fry or whatever. But, yeah, so I'm happy for her. That's a lot of friggin' weight, and she did it all by herself. Well, her mom helped her cook, but you know what I mean, so... I'm really anxious to get down to Houston because as soon as I get down there, the sooner I get surgery. It took a few weeks for me and my mom to find a place to stay and get it set up so we could move in. So we're packing to head out tomorrow. Coming from where I live, going into a huge city, I think that itself is scary. So this is a huge step for me, but I'm glad to have the support of both my parents helping me to do this. My mom and I realized this was all too much to handle on our own. So I called my dad to see if he'd come and help us make the move down. And he said he'd- Oh damn, here comes daddy. But I thought she was estranged from her dad. Did I misunderstand that? I guess they have a relationship a little bit, but I thought that was real like, uh, like I love my father, but he's not around that much. I don't know, so. Be here and he'd bring some help so we could knock this out in no time. Then he's gonna go down with us to help move in too. So I'm really grateful he's doing this. Hi, Dad. Hello, sweetheart. Careful. Mm. How are you doing? Good. You ready? Why oh, are you crying? You've never gone this far away from me. Don't cry. Aww. You'll be all right. Take a breath. All right. He's always worried about me, so it's been nice to see how much he cared. Well, I'm thinking we might as well start with the back room, gentlemen. Right now, Lacey has hardly any light. She doesn't get to walk the beaches. She doesn't walk the mall. And even places, you know, that she does walk, it affects her because she knows everybody's staring. But if she keeps going, she's very close to being bedridden. So I will do anything. Damn, that stool looks way too old to be risking that. But I guess 100 pounds down, she's kind of feeling good about it. But I wouldn't have risked that sucker. She's about to hit the deck again. But uh, yeah, I guess it could be kind of hard on her dad. Because he's the one that's going to come back, right? He's coming back to Missouri. So her and her mom will be down there freaking fighting like cats and dogs, probably. I think I can to support her. Because basically, I think right now it's her, her last chance. Having all this help and both my parents here with me means a lot. And I know everyone is working together to make sure I get the help I need. And I'm just excited and I can't wait to get down there and start my new life. Okay, I'll just drop her down. It should work. Yeah, you wanna go? Okay. Puppy. <laughs> I think Lacey's happy about this trip. I... That is way too active of a dog for 600 pound person to have. That dog's got a freaking run. That's a high energy dog. Also, what happened to the cat? That thing is just gone. I actually seen her smile last night for the first time and it was a real smile. Because I think there she's finally is. processing going to Texas and it's coming to fruition. You ready for the ride, poor baby? Yeah. We'll get you a bigger crate. But I feel like I'm starting a whole new chapter of my life where it's all gonna be completely different. 
It's probably gonna take three to four days for us to get down there, so I know it won't be easy. Good job. Yay. Damn, if you put me in a car with my mom and dad for that many days in a row, some of us aren't coming out of that sucker alive. I love them, but I don't think I could be confined to an area with them for that long, so. But I can't wait because I've never had the chance to see the world or this country and visit other places. So this is all fascinating and amazing to me. And every step of my journey feels like it's given me a chance to do things I never would have been able to do before. This is a big moment we've been waiting for. So even though this will probably be the hardest thing I've ever put my body through, I'm determined to make it there. And as far as... Yeah, that's kind of a long trip to be sitting in a car. She'll probably have swelling, all kinds of discomfort but at least she's making the effort and making a change and trying to take her life back. So many people on this show just kind of are like, eh, you know, it'll happen for me without me having to do anything, and they just don't put in any effort. At least she's starting out strong, so. As I'm concerned, there's no turning back. We are finally oh. here in Houston, and it's been new. Told you guys that she's getting in some exercise. She's on Tinder right now, lining some stuff up for the road. Get that cardio, baby. Incredible trip. But it's also been a hard trip because we've been on the road for four days. That's it. Oh, look at there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, Mr. I'm completely exhausted. It is taking a toll on everyone, not just me because my parents have been fighting a lot and everyone's just cranky. I told you. Straight back. Stop. 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 And so I think it'd be best if we can just get this all over with. Oh, that's gonna be a- Damn, buddy, what were you doing, NASCAR with that sucker? Yeah, he must have been really whipping it or they didn't pack it in there properly. But also, yeah, that's just a long ass trip. They have to be happy to get there, but they should kind of be helping him get the stuff in. So, a tall order. Oh my God, it feels so good. Well, it feels comforting in here. So good. I'm hoping I can get moved in pretty quick and all this can be done. And everyone can go back to their normal lives before there's any more fighting or anyone else gets upset. That damn stool. Why did we even need this? I don't know, man. You know what I mean? She wanted to bring it. <sighs> because when it happens, it makes me feel just like I did when I was a kid, where my mom and dad <sighs> argued. And all I could do to handle the fear and pain was eat. So this has been... Okay, I get that that's her comfort, right? But how long are you going to use your parents arguing as an excuse to comfort eat when you're a grown ass woman? Like, I understand it was tough. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't agree with people arguing in front of their kids. But at the same time, lady, like, how damn old are you? Mom and dad fought. Man, give me a Twinkie. Like, it doesn't work like that once you're that old. So. It's been really hard. Yeah, go ahead and start making the swing. Careful. Be careful. Right here. Right here. Right here? Yep. I'm gonna put my end down. There's gonna be a big couch. Walk it up. Made it all the way down here without even a scratch. Awesome. Two more minutes, I'll be ready to go again. All right. Boxes. There you go. What's Hotter doing? Sitting on his butt. Oh, geez. Hotter, not hotter. Okay. Are you gonna help or what? You want me to help you in my hospital bed? Oh yeah, tensions are high, buddy. Moving sucks for anybody. But if somebody's sitting there not helping, granted he's a little older, maybe let him catch his breath. But if anybody's just sitting there watching, you want to say something, so. Closet. 
Right there. <laughs> Dad, stop. Chad. What? Don't set him off. It's too hot out there. He gets hey. hot headed anyway. Hey. Here, let me get that. Get out of my way. Oh, stop! Right now! Did you stop it? You need to calm down. You need to calm down. You calm down right now. Tell me something like that. Damn, maybe he does have anger issues. He don't seem scary to me. I'd give that guy a two-piece and a biscuit real fast. I I got the next bag, honey. I don't know what got into him, but all of a sudden he's a an ass. I'm still thankful my dad's helping me do this, but I'm not gonna lie. When he is mad, it makes it really hard to do what I'm supposed to. I have solved all of our eating issues. I'll do chicken. I'll do any kind of chicken. All right, I'll get that. Cool. This all has created a lot of fear and doubt about whether I'm going to be able to do this at all. Because experiencing all this anxiety and fear with everyone fighting has made me realize how much food helps me to manage. Oh, my God. People are angry. I need chicken grease. Come, what kind of excuse is that, lady? Also, like, she could do the Popeyes, but you definitely can't have the damn skin. But you're still going to be on high calorie with that. So let's see if she resists the skin. And deal with all that when it happens. Just set it in down. Do they down have baked? The food's here, guys. There's chicken, more chicken. Wow. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, yeah. So help yourselves. Jesus, man, this lady's like single-handedly responsible for chicken genocide. I want to get my life back, but I'm terrified that I can't and that I'm not ready for surgery because it's going to take away something I need and that's oh, really important to me. Oh, my God. And if I have to give up food, I'll get to a point where I just won't be able to deal with things. And if that happens, I don't know what I'll do. It could be- Christ, lady, are you serious right now? Oh my God. This surgery is gonna give you your life back. What do you mean, take something? Oh God, this is making me angry. She was doing so good. Well, Popeyes just, oh my God. Sue Popeyes, they ruined it for her. You're really bad. So moving ahead may end up being one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. God. <sighs> After we got all my stuff moved in here and I got situated, my dad and my brother headed back home. I called Dr. No and told him about how I'm struggling with having second thoughts about weight loss surgery and how my family fighting and all the stress of that made me when- And Dr. Now called you an idiot. That old man, oh my God. He's trying to save your damn life. Also, why would you call him and snitch on yourself? That just seems counterproductive. Just jump back on the damn diet real quick. If I could truly give up what has helped me cope my whole life, so he said that he's canceling the surgery and he wants oh, me to go God. see a psychotherapist before we decide to do anything else. But my mom is really upset because she feels like I'm risking my only chance to do this. And she's also worried if I go to therapy that they'll find out that I suffer from bipolar disorder. And she thinks that could ruin my chances to get surgery. Okay, well that explains a lot. If she has bipolar disorder, that explains the up and down and her doing so great and then crashing. That really does. Now I get her a little more. But therapy, definitely going to be a good tool for her. So she should be in therapy. Doctor now should have started out with that. He usually does, right? So she wants me to avoid telling them if I go. But I'm not going to lie. All right, so what are we going to do about this, this problem? I don't want to talk about it. Now, don't, don't go run into your room. You do that every time. Newsflash, she didn't run anywhere. But also, 
We're gonna order Chinese food. That's what she thinks fixes everything, right? Lacey, I'm not letting this go, so you better come out here and discuss this with me. Come on, Lacey. Leave me alone. Fine, I'll leave you alone, Lacey. For a while. And you have to rethink this. I mean, she's clearly in a depressed state, but also... My mom is one to follow me if I walked away from her, too, so I know exactly how that works. But didn't she have a damn door? Just shut it and lock her out. The lady ain't that strong. She ain't kicking in doors to get you. Maybe there is Got no door. Nazar the second is Houston Zoo on Herman Park Drive. Hey. hey, Siri. Damn, she got up quick. Why are you even bothering calling? I need Dr. Nazardin's office, please. You're not calling them. You're not One calling possibility them. is nose home remodeling. You don't tell me. <laughs> nose home remodeling. No, that's so funny. Also, yeah, that's a classic mom move when they want to piss you off. Mine used to sit there and do this thing where she talks loud on the phone about me until I come in there and confront her. She, oh, that's so manipulative, though. To do. There's no reason to. I've already Just talked to them. I haven't. You don't need to. I already told you what they said. You just You're not listening speak to with me. Him. I need to speak with him. He's not the one you to talk to. Share anything with me. I. You are not listening to what I'm saying. I, I need, need to know if you have to get this resolved before you move on with your surgery. And if so, I, I do. need to know how long it's going to be. Because I am not going to stay in this town more than a year i mean i get that she kind of has uprooted herself to help her so she feels she could at least talk to her i always try to understand where people are coming from but in all honesty this is just super dysfunctional so it's hard to even understand where they're each coming from what else do you want me to do i just need to go to a psychologist mom i want you to not go to your room and act like a baby I'm not. And I need to know about I tell you, you don't you hear don't me. You don't share with me. I tell you Only everything. Only when I need to know, you no. tell me. No, you don't listen to me. Bull you don't hear me. You're not hearing me right now. You don't hear go, me right now. Go make yourself some lunch and no. leave me alone. I mean, you don't need to know everything. I'd say it's need to know, but also she uprooted... This is a tough one, man. But, yeah, I could see tensions running high. Maybe... Hopefully Lacey doesn't go for any more Taco Bell therapy or anything. You're not hearing me. I will call myself. Still not hearing me. Oh shit, she can't catch her. I wish my mom would just leave me alone. She can't just give me the space I need to work through this. I know I'm going to get to a point where I just can't take it. I mean, trust me, plenty of people are giving you space because ain't nobody trying to get stepped on with those toes or nothing like that. But also, her mother, oh my god, she's uprooted her life. And this lady's just like, leave me alone. She's probably like the biggest baby I've seen on here so far. For all that her mom was trying to help, but then again, maybe her mom's a little passive aggressive, so... And I'm going to end up either quitting the whole program altogether or just end up giving into my cravings. It's your life, lady. And just eat everything I want. And if I let either of those happen, it'll really mean I lost my chance to get weight loss surgery. And I'll end up right back where I was before I started all of this. So I'm really scared right now because I'm close to letting that happen. I mean, talk about starting out hot just to crumble at the end and fall apart. I really want to see her succeed too because her life I don't think has ever been all it was cracked up to be because it seems like her whole life she just struggled, struggled, struggled. Now I find out she's bipolar. So yeah, I, I kind of get her up and down thing. I don't have anything like that, thank God, but I feel for people who do. They just have to like, they can't find their normal, you know?
My mom and me have been in Houston for a couple of weeks, and I've been really struggling with feeling like weight loss surgery may not be the best decision for me right now. <sighs> I'm just really scared about giving up the possibility of having food to help me cope with the really hard things when they come up. So with all that, Dr. Now canceled my weight loss surgery and wanted me to see a therapist. Bro, you were right there, but did anybody see that he has a Skittles painting on the wall? How are you a damn therapist for fat people with Skittles on the wall? What are you doing, you psycho? And she has to find the happiness within herself. Like, you have to be comfortable with who you are before you can change, like, your outer appearance, I guess, so. Come on in. Or make those life changes. See, nice Skittles. Nice to meet you. Me too. <laughs> have a seat right in the corner. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Me too. So, Dr. Now sent you to me to help you understand all the psychological aspects of the surgery, and especially that notion that you're not going to be able to use the food as a strategy anymore to deal with your feelings. Because when you go through the surgery, you won't be able to use food. Right. Uh, unless you start stretching out your stomach. Don't want that. So you're going to have to have a really a long redundant list of things you can use to fill in because you, you simply won't be able to do it without compromising um let's talk about food as a coping strategy because i'm wow that guy is short man his feet are barely touching the ground but the whole comfort food thing you can stretch your stomach right back out like you could undo all that progress super quick if you just sit there and eat to the point you're stuffed every time you need to eat just enough until you start to feel full and stop. Don't keep going. Don't push it. That's like the biggest thing I, I would say you should do. I'm kind of going to kind of presume mm -hmm. that that's been one of your coping strategies. It has been. Okay. How has that food been us. a coping strategy for you? Um, well, you know, sugar was one of them, like the main one. I, so you're a, you're a sweets person. I am a sweets person. Okay. Shocker. At least I have been. And and you've lost some weight already, right? Yeah. So what what's filled in for food? Um, I don't know. She started mixing sugar and butter butter together again and eating that. Like that's a psychotic mixture. Is that how you make icing, or was it powdered sugar and butter? I might be gaming more. Okay. Um, so we probably want to come up with a longer list of alternative coping strategies. Okay. I've been trying to think of something else to do, but I hate doing Tinder. the walking thing. What do the medical doctors tell you you need to do? Walk. <laughs> yeah, walk, <laughs> okay. Walk. So adding some physical activity. I'm trying to think of other coping strategies you might have. Um, I like to- mm, Buddy, do you want to help her cope a little bit? Cause uh, I think she'd let you. Do art. Okay. Um, so some kind of hobby like that. Mm -hmm. Do you get out of the house very much? No, we don't really go out very much. <laughs> There's a real value to being, I, I say, in public. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be social, just being in public. Even walking the aisles of a store, yeah, going we like to, to, a, to a shopping mall. There's a, a huge shopping no, center that you don't. can walk. Stop lying. We like to walk the aisles of the store. I don't like to do that shit. But also, being social would probably help her a lot come out of her shell. I don't know, do what I do. I friggin' stand there and talk to the Walmart greeter for five minutes every time I walk in there. He's my friggin' buddy. I love that guy. For weeks and, <laughs> and, not, and not repeat yourself. Right. Uh, so being in public should be one of your goals. Okay. And so let's talk about something you could do right now mm -hmm. that would get you out around other people. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know how to be well, out with other you, people. <laughs> I think she should get into gymnastics. What do you guys think? You think she can do a good cartwheel? She almost did when she got out of that damn taxi. You you <laughs> mentioned the Botanic Gardens, right? Yeah, I've, I've been wanting to go there. Okay. okay. And I just haven't gone. Yeah, I wonder if you could do that once or twice a week. Okay. Two outings a week. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Excited, okay. actually. <laughs> good. So it's great to see you. Yeah. I'm going to let you out here. Okay, if I can get out of here. Got it? Yep. Great. Okay. You know what I think that people on this show should do? Start like a YouTube channel or something. Just put yourself out there or like your journey. I think it's done like wonders for me, but I was already a pretty cocky guy. 
but it's kind of just learning to talk to the camera and just be okay with who you are. Like, I think that would help them a lot. Okay, nice to meet you too. Take care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I finally did this. It was hard and a little scary, especially at the beginning, but I think it was helpful just to be able to verbalize some of how I'm feeling and what I'm struggling with. I already realized some of the things we talked about because I know I need to find ways to cope that don't involve food. Definitely. Actually being able to do that is what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so she knows what her problem is for a lot of the case. So hopefully she can address them, make the changes, and she's not on her way to Bucky's right now for some damn brisket, but we'll see. So talking through some ideas and suggestions of how to do that was probably the most helpful. Except for walking, because exercise has never been therapeutic for me. So finding a hobby seems like the option with the most potential for me. But I'm not sure. The best hobby for her is going to be swimming. Because, I mean, if she don't like physical activities, that's physical, but it's going to be a lot less impact. I really want to get back into swimming. I ain't got a damn pool. I need to join like a YMCA or something. Or find somebody to let me swim. How I find something that can actually compete with how it feels to eat something that tastes really good and how that makes me feel. But I'm not giving up. I'm still holding on to the hope I can figure this out and get past this. Because I know if I give up, then it's all over for me. Okay, I like hearing that. That's positive. Oh my God. Oh shit, the cat ear gamer look. Go get them, gamer. I guess that's gonna burn some car. How much do you think flicking your thumbs burns? Probably like a calorie an hour or something. So she's doing something. Last few weeks, things haven't really got much better for me. After going to therapy, I've been trying to find something that will help me start to cope without going to food. Call of Duty. But my mom got fed up with me since I still don't feel ready to move ahead with weight loss surgery. So last week she moved back home to Michigan. So I'm on my own. And I feel like I moved down here away from everything I know just to end up living like I was before. Except now I'm trying my hardest not to eat stuff I shouldn't. And that's making- Bruh, how long do you think that she's just been sitting there with all that exercise equipment and done nothing? Because I swear I can see the dust on that friggin' ball over in the corner. It all even harder. So I'm feeling really discouraged. And I honestly don't know how much longer I can keep going like this. Because What's it's about? only getting harder. And I know I'm getting close to giving in. And once I do that, it'll mean I messed up the only chance I have to save my life. Look, you're not in the position to give in, sweetie. You need to like double down right now or the Grim Reaper is going to catch up because you started to gain a little bit of a lead in that tag game and now he's catching back up since you're slipping. But also, how many Xbox Live boyfriends do you think she had? Because when I was a kid, I thought it was hilarious to stack them up and then I get like five, six of them, invite them all to the same room and watch them fight. That shit was hilarious. month or so has been up and down for me after my mom left i struggled a bit where i gave in and had some things that weren't healthy but tasted good just to try and feel better and i did for a little bit but afterwards i started to feel disgusted with myself so i'm trying harder Dr. Paradise said I needed to find other ways and outlets to help deal with my emotions. 
wait, his name's Dr. Paradise? That definitely sounds like an adult film name, but she should kind of, like, feel disgusted with herself, but at the same time, everybody messes up. So you can still come back from this. This is not counting you out at all. Like, you still have every opportunity in the world to turn this around. So, a couple of weeks ago, I started painting. And I've been trying to express my creativity and do this at least once a day. And I would say it does feel therapeutic in some ways. And the biggest thing is that it's given me hope again, that it's actually gonna be possible for me to find other things and ways to cope instead of food. It looks pretty. But I still know I have a long way to go to get to that point. It just feels really good to believe I can do this again. Okay, I like a can-do attitude. Uh-oh. I'm finally moving ahead with weight loss surgery. I spent the past couple months finding other ways to deal with my emotions. And I've been able to work past that fear that I won't have what I need when things are hard. So I called that. Do you guys think that she just has like a destructive personality where when something starts going good for her, she destroys it? And because she wants more attention from her parents? Do you think that that maybe I'm psychoanalyzing a little too much? I don't know. I'm not a therapist. I was a fifth grade peer mediator, though. So I think I'm pretty close. Now, and I told him that I'm ready to move ahead. Both my mom and dad are down here to be with me today, and I am thankful for that. But I told them there is to be absolutely no fighting right now. Okay. Papa Rage. Yep, I'm fine. I'm not. <laughs> You're not okay? It's gonna I'm be okay. I'm feeling a little bit nervous for you. It's gonna be okay. Oh. <sighs> You angry oh, softy. It's gonna be Big okay. David. Sorry, I'm so emotional. No, you're okay. It's fine. I'm really happy for this day, but I'm really scared too. I'm nervous too, but I it's gonna be okay. I can feel it. I'm gonna get changed, so okay. I'm gonna have y'all go out. I'll leave you alone. Okay. I mean, what's the point in that? You already showed all of us what you're working with. I've seen all of your honey biscuits, sweetie. I don't think you need to shoo them out already. They've seen it before. She made it. And he helped, too. My fear was that replacing what food does for me just wasn't possible. But I've been able to work past that fear, so I know I'm ready for this. Because this is the tool I need to save my life. And if I don't move ahead today, I don't think I'm going to get another chance after all this. So it's yeah. now or never, and I'm ready for it. Today we are attempting to do a gastric sleeve operation on Lacey. After getting approved for surgery almost four months ago, Lacey started struggling with some emotional and psychological issues that she needed to work through first. Let's start. And thankfully, she not only made some progress with that, but still continued to lose and is down to 505 today. Okay, so she just had a little trip up and then she got back on track. So good. I wasn't sure if she was still going in the wrong way or she was coming back. But Dr. Now, I guess, said she was doing good enough. And that's good, man. Because I hate seeing people that like start out good, crash. But that yo-yo diet effect where you just start out strong and then you can't keep it up because it's too hard on you. That's kind of like pretty common. At least I did that. Started out good, crash. Started out good, crash. I did that like over and over. Alright, room right off. So it's easy enough to show me she can stay consistent and not completely give in when she's struggling. And I have no doubt she's ready for this step today. Going a little bit higher. But the fact that Lacey is still around 500 pounds makes any surgery for her very high risk because her weight could be too much for her already struggling systems. 
So we're going to make sure that her body is not being pushed too hard to the point where she could develop a life-threatening issue or we may have to end the surgery. But our goal is to completely perform a gastric sleep on her. And what that operation does for her is reduce the stomach by 90%. Bro, it's always crazy to see what they actually can do nowadays. I mean, I don't know what that thing does. I guess it burns and cuts at the same time. But the thought of that just being inside my stomach and, like, fishing around just makes me feel like, ugh, man, that, like, thank God for friggin' painkillers and stuff after that, because it hurt. Leaving a small narrow tube that looks similar to a sleep. So the patient's food intake is physically limited, and the patient is less hungry. So this operation will give them an opportunity to lose even more weight. I'm really nervous and scared of the way she, because it is surgery, and uh, up here, the unforeseen circumstances are always possible. But the best. Bruh, it is so obvious that they hate each other's guts. I think they just need to have an anger bang. Just like get it out already. Sometimes that's work. You know how you guys have like breakup sex or whatever? They just need to get a go at it. Get some of this frustration out of the room. The benefit of this is going to outweigh the risks. So hopefully it should be okay. And uh, I just hope this over fairly quickly. Go forward, go forward, come on. All right, it is detached. Go ahead and just gradually take it out. Okay, put that on the table over there. Okay, can you turn the room light on? Let's close it up. Okay. Bro, that's so crazy that it looks like that. Because I would imagine the amount that she was eating before, it was like huge. But I guess she did a good job shrinking it. Because obviously she's been on the program for a while now. All finished. This surgery went very well. There were no significant issues and we were able to safely perform a sleep gastrectomy on her. So now we get her to recovery and she'll be able to go home in a couple days. For the next one, she'll be on liquid diet and she should be able to lose at least 35 pounds during that time. And after that, she should lose at least 25 pounds a month until she gets to within 100 pounds or so from her target weight. So, Really that much? But all right. So yeah, the liquid diet, he does it longer than mine. Mine was two weeks and then two weeks puree. And then you get to the kind of like tuna fish, ground beef. And then after like two months, you're back to normal. So but this surgery is an important tool that will help her a great deal by preventing her physical drive to eat right now. But it's very important that before she encounters a situation where she starts to struggle again, we make sure she continues going to her psychotherapist to work on all the emotional issues that still play a significant role in how she uses food for comfort. If she doesn't, at some point in the future, her emotional struggles will eventually lead her to start to give in to her desire to once again go to food to deal with it all. And if that happens, over time, she will stretch her stomach back out to undo this operation. And then- I don't know. I, I'm not getting that kind of feeling from her. Like, I feel like she just wants a new life, but she's kind of used to being, like, self-destruct, so... Hopefully she keeps going in the right path. She's doing great so far. She's lost almost 200 pounds, I think, because he said she was right around five, right? And after that, it will only be a matter of time before her weight loss will stop and she will start to regain it all. So Lacey still has to continue to work hard and address her core issues behind her eating if she wants any chance at all to be successful in the long run. It's a baby. Damn. She was supposed to lose more than that. Didn't she have it around the six month mark? And that's all she's lost? What the hell is she eating?
It's been a little over a month since my surgery, and okay. I feel like I've been doing well. That's not bad, then. After the surgery, Dr. Now told me I had to have someone around to stay with me and help me if I was going to go back to my apartment. But my mom told me how long it took me to move ahead with this surgery wasn't part of the deal. But my dad said he wanted to do it and be there for me. And it's been really nice having this time with him. But he has to go back in about a week now that I'm fully recovered. I mean, to be fair, I would say that's a lot to ask anybody to sign up for, just uprooting and coming there. But if they could split it up between the two of them, sounds fair to me. And if she's going to eat that, that's probably a little too early to try that. A month in? Yeah, maybe it would be. Actually, it's ground beef, right? She would be right about there, so. But I'm talking to my mom to see it's if she'll just okay. agree to spend a few months down here with me so I can have someone, like Dr. Now says. I had another appointment with Dr. Paradise, and what he talked to me about was starting to address the things that first led me to using food as a way of dealing with things. So I know I need to talk to both my dad and my mom about that, but I feel like things are so good between us right now that I don't want to ruin it. You want me to take that? Sure. Dr. Now and Dr. Paradise both keep telling me that I'll start to gain again if I don't get at these things. And I'm I mean, in all fairness, yes, you have to address the mental issues, but you're 29, right? Like, how long can you be like, oh, it's their fault if I mess up? When do you start saying like, hey, this is on me, like, I got this, right? Just be strong and secure and know that it's on you and you're doing good. Like, she's doing good, so... I'm gonna try to work up the courage to do what I need because I've been given a chance to turn my life around and I can't let myself stop short or I'm gonna end up messing this all up and I can't let that happen. What's on your mind? Popeyes? Nothing, I just, uh, I'm so in therapy I talked about when I was younger, and you and mom, mom worked a lot, you worked a lot. Yes, yeah. And it's, the, the point is, is that I was alone and I had to make the decisions on my myself. And I made myself feel better by eating food because I was alone a lot. Well, that makes a lot more sense. If she's totally alone and she just turns to, you know, Pop-Tarts or cupcakes, because that's something that can make her happy in the moment. But, yeah, I, I see that. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, so. I felt alone a lot. Those are things that I carried with me from my childhood. And as an adult, I'm trying to let them go and just move on. And it changes me. It's going to change you and I. So we can change into something better, too. So... You know, I, I didn't know that had an impact on you. Well, it's... <clears throat> maybe I wasn't there as, as you grew up and, you know, basically as, as you got bigger, you know, I, I hate to say, but, you know, it was almost embarrassing. Damn, I can't believe he said that twice. How are you embarrassed of your kid? Because I would be embarrassed to have you as a parent if that's how you feel about your child. But also, when you're a little kid, I feel like you're sp it's supposed to be the other way around. Like, you're embarrassed that your parents showing up and, right, embarrassing you or whatever, right? Because I know I was when I was in, like, middle school. Like, Mom, don't pick me up here. Pick me up over there. But this guy's just straight up telling her he was embarrassed of her weight. I don't think that's, like, anything positive that's going to help this situation, buddy. Took well in public. Mm-hmm. I felt always that we were, uh, you know, we were clocked at, mm -hmm. and you know, like, you know, like a freak show. Definitely. You know, you know, type thing. So that you know, I withdrew. You know, maybe that's as as it went on. That's why I wasn't there. I wouldn't have to confront that or deal with that. Yeah. But yet I, I didn't know how to fix the problem. Right. You know, I'm I'm the guy that all my life I've had the answers to how to fix this, how to fix that, and you know, the. Uh, Sounds like an excuse to me. You checked out, and then you were just like, I was embarrassed. 
I don't think that's the case. I think it was just easier to be more disconnected, especially if you and your wife were fighting. I wouldn't say you were embarrassed of your daughter, though, because then you're just deflecting it onto her. I don't really like the way that sounds, so. Was, that was one problem that I, you know, I was never able to fix. That, that, has, uh, that has occurred to me. That uh... I, I, wasn't, I wasn't always there. I, I, I was, I was uh, too busy in my own world. You know, the strip club, banging like, hookers. I don't like talking about it because it's in the past I, and I things agree. are different now. You're where you're supposed to be now. I... That sounded wrong. Obviously, I didn't mean hookers were at the strip club. I meant he went to the strip club and then found a hooker. So I support all you ladies on the poll. Thank you. And you do everything that you can for me now. I'm just glad that I've been able to be a part of this moments, mm -hmm. you know, what you just went through and what you're going through and continue to go through. I'm glad you're there with me. You call, I come around. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it seems like it did some good to air stuff out, but I don't know. I don't feel like I could ever tell my future child I was embarrassed of them for any reason. I think I just support them and whatever choices they make, so. <laughs> no, I love you. I love you too. I love you too. Does she shower? Because she still has tape on her wrist. taking a painting class and I want to continue to learn how to do it better and learn ways I can improve my painting skills so I can continue to express myself and put my feelings into the art I make okay hi, hi. all right welcome to board and brush anything you need don't be afraid to ask any questions okay. before my this is actually really good news she's being social putting herself out there more Maybe she feels more confident already with just the amount she's lost, so I'm happy for her here. My dad left. I was able to work up the courage to have a deeper conversation with him. And I have to say, I was surprised at how great it felt to let out something that I have been holding in for over 20 years. So I'm feeling really good and confident right now. I know I still have a long ways to go on my weight loss journey, but each day is another step in the right direction. I'm getting out there and starting to live life and meet new people. And being in public is not as bad as I thought it would be. I think you're ready. Let's see it. Okay. Good. All right, so you're gonna peel straight up. Take a deep breath. <laughs> the like nerve wracking part. Oh God, it's okay. There you go, there you go. I'm starting to have some excess skin in places that's bothering me. So my next big goal is to try and lose enough to get approved for my first skin removal. Yeah, I mean, she's gonna have a lot on her arm. My arms weren't nearly as big as hers. And look, I can wave hello and goodbye at you at the same time, so. I have my next appointment in a month and I'm hoping that maybe I'll even be able to get approved then. So I'm working hard right now to stay on track and lose as much as I can by then. BBW dealership. Today, I'm back to see Dr. Now for my next appointment and see how much I've lost over the last two months. Lacey? Smile, woman. Damn. At my last appointment a couple of months ago, I was down to 469. And Dr. Hey. Now said I should be losing at least 20 pounds a month if I stay on track. So that means I should be down to 429 today. 427. Uh, damn, she did good though. Also, I laughed because she said 69. I'm sorry, I am a literal child. That's a smirk. That's I'll not as it. low as it's supposed to be, but it's not too far from my goal. And I'm still losing a good amount. So I'm feeling pretty good about that number, and hopefully Dr. Now is too. 
damn scale gremlins. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. All right, today you're down to 435 pounds. So that is an average monthly weight loss of 17 pounds. Yes. So it is a little bit low, but not bad. Mm -hmm. How has learning to cope with your emotions in a healthier way been going? Very well. Um, I'm doing a lot better than I thought I was. I mean, it's not easy, but I'm relearning everything, so I feel good about that. Yeah, it's all a learning process. You'll have to learn new portions, and you'll have to learn to deal with things without just turning to the stuff that was normally where you would turn to, you know? For her, the chocolate cupcake I saw her, like, guzzle down at the start. I don't even think she chewed it, man. She literally drank a cupcake. It was impressive, but... Okay, that's good, because we don't want the amount you're losing to get any lower. So your focus right now needs to be on continuing to deal with your emotional issues to make sure that doesn't happen, okay? Okay. And work to get back up to losing 20 pounds a month right now. You got it? Yeah. But otherwise, you're doing great. You lost 256 pounds in around a year, which is a good amount. Yeah. How does it feel? Awesome. That's a lot. That's great. So you're getting there, but don't let up or get too comfortable because your goal weight is 150 pounds. Really? Yes. Ooh. That okay. is where you need to be for your height. Okay. Damn, that'd be impressive if she hit 150, but also the loose skin on her is going to be like a big issue as far as rubbing and rashes. Hadn't got quite as bad for me yet just because I'm taller, but I think she would struggle to get to 150, but if she can, more power to her, you know? So we still got 285 pounds to go. <laughs> Long way to go. <laughs> so we are only at the halfway point in your weight loss journey. But if you stay on track, we can have you to your target within the next nine to 10 months. <laughs> Sounds good? That's crazy. The next big step for you will be removing extra skin. And we'll see where you need us to address that most once you get below 350. Okay. I can see some of it starting to hang around your abdomen. Let me take a look and see how it's pulling on you right now. Okay. So. Bro, it's so funny because when I saw my surgeon last time and he was trying to look at my loose skin, like I was just standing there, he's looking at my stomach, right? He's got two, like, he had, uh, what are they, interns or whatever, two young lady doctors in training or whatever, right? And he just pulls my pants out and he's looking at my fupa. He's like, oh, yeah, we got to get rid of that thing, too. And I was like, sure, more the merrier. Show everybody, buddy. But whatever. At least they were hot doctors. So your stomach, what we call it, in two tiers, in the upper <laughs> part and lower part. Yep. <laughs> yeah, how is the lower part holding up when you stand up? And does it pull a lot? And... Do you want to see? Want me to stand up? Yeah, go ahead and show me. Want to touch it? It's going to start to get very painful. So you need to keep working hard. And once you lose around 80 more pounds, we will remove that. And it will be another 20 to 30 pounds off of you. Okay. All right, Lacey, you're doing great. You've gone from one of the highest BMI I have seen at 122, and now it's 77. Yeah. And that's much better. So keep it up. Thank you. Did your mom make it back down here to stay with you and help you out like you need? Yes, she did. That's great. Tell your mom I said hello. Okay, I will. And I'll see you soon. Okay, I'll see Well, that's good. I mean, at least things started to work out and go in the proper direction for her. Because I didn't know if they were there for a minute. She started out hot, lost a little steam, and then finally got back on it to the point where Dr. Now's happy. So she's doing friggin' great, man. So, and now her mom's back. Let's see how that's going, if they haven't killed each other yet. See ya. All right. Bye, Doc. Bye. I think Lacey is doing well. Her weight loss is a little bit lower than what it should be, which means there's still some significant emotional struggles that you need to address. But as long as she's doing that and facing what she needs, I feel confident that we can get her to her target weight here soon. I'm feeling really positive right now. And my plan is to keep working hard and doing all the things I need to completely hit my goal. I have a lot of things I still need to face and work through to make sure I stay on track. But of how far I've come, I'm more determined and motivated than ever to make sure I get there. Good. I was gonna say, there's still too much left. 
I've started a more consistent exercise routine that involves going on a hike outside every day. And it's actually become something I look forward to because it's a time where I can clear my head and just get centered. It's really, really- Yeah, the craziest part is you can go from being over 600 pounds to actually liking working out. Because a lot of people don't like to start it in the morning, right? But once you get to the end of your workout, man, you feel so good. And you just kind of become like addicted to that instead of just eating food, so. Relax with me. I really enjoy taking in the scenery and for some reason that just puts my worries away. The whole journey so far has not been what I expected at all. But I'm starting to love my life now and how good. it's completely changed over the last year. And I'm working to break all the bad habits I had. It is just wait till you find you a hype, hot little mountain biker to play with this sprocket. It isn't easy, but I think I'm doing pretty good with it. Or mountain Make biker lady. I've had aspirations and dreams for my life. I want to get a job and one day find love. I've been given a second chance at life. And no matter what, I'm going to keep moving ahead to a future I now believe in. All right, let's go Lacey. She turned it all around, man. Up and down there for a while, but ultimately she started to go in the right direction and she started to do what she needed to do. So stop whining, start doing, like I said at the start of this thing. But her family dynamic was pretty weird. I don't know, her dad and mom, it seems like there was a lot of feelings there that just weren't shared with each other. Ultimately, I think being more open is probably a lot better for like just the overall health, mental health of the entire family. Like, if you have a problem with somebody or something, you're better off saying something to them rather than sitting there and being kind of passive aggressive. Her dad's got a little bit of rage issues. Her mom's got a little bit of uh, main character syndrome. She wants to be the center of attention. Lacey has a little bit of I'm the baby, treat me like that. So that's just my take on it. That's how I feel about it. But uh, all right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.